In this video, we're going to compute the required volume that needs to be extracted from a borrow pit. Okay, so let me kind of give you through, let me take you through the scenario that we have here. There's a project in which we're installing 350,000 cubic feet of soil for this embankment. Okay, now the project specifications indicate that we need a relative compaction of 95%. So that's the project, right? We're going to install 350,000 cubic feet of soil, and we have to meet a 95% relative compaction. Okay. The source of our soil is coming from the marble pit. Now, a test of the soil in its existing condition indicates that it has a moist unit weight of 114 point pound, I'm sorry, 114 pounds per cubic foot with a moisture content of 18%. Okay, so that's in its natural state. Now, when they took the soil, they took it to the laboratory, and they performed a standard proctor on the soil, okay, they determined, the soil lab determined, that the maximum dry density, okay, so when they plot the curve, and they get the peak point on the curve, the maximum dry unit weight is 114 pounds per cubic foot, okay, with an optimum moisture of 16%. So again, this is, these are the properties of the soil as is, Okay, with its moisture unit weight of 114 pounds per cubic foot and its moisture content 18. These are the values that you get when you take it to the lab, you run a standard proctor, and you figure out what the maximum dry unit weight is at the optimum moisture. Okay. So our question is very simple. If we need to have 350,000 cubic feet for our embankment project in, like, that we're going to place, how much do we need to extract from the borrow pit? So the first step in our calculation is to figure out what we have in terms of dry unit weights for both the borrow pit and for the embankment. So I'm going to start with the embankment. Now I was given that we have a relative compaction of 95%, which is 0.95. Okay. What this means is that if we take a ratio between the dry unit weight of the embankment. I'm going to use an E subscript for that, for embankment. And then we have the dry unit weight maximum. Okay, and again, that's from the lab. Okay? So that ratio, so what the contractor, when the contractor places the soil and compacts it, the contractor has to get 95% of this dry unit maximum weight, okay? So when we run through the calculation, we see that our fill is required, the embankment is required to have a dry unit weight of 108.3 pounds per cubic foot. And again, that's just by, when I look at the values here, let me substitute this in real quick. And this value here is the 114. So essentially, 114 times 0.95 gives us the required dry unit weight for our embankment. Okay. Now let's look at the borrow. So the borrow, we were given a unit weight of 114, and this is its this is in its existing condition, right? This is a moist unit weight. Okay. So the moist unit weight, which is defined as, which can, which can be calculated as the dry unit weight, I'm using the subscript B for borrow, for the borrow pit, over 1 plus the moisture, and again, this value is given to us as 114. So if we back solve for this, we get that the dry unit weight for the borrow pit is going to be equal to 114, again that would be pounds per cubic foot, time, I'm sorry, okay, divided by This is going to be divided by, I'm going to write to the end, 1 
plus our moisture, which is 0 0.1. 1 okay. And we end up getting a dry unit weight for our borrow of 96.6 .6 pounds per cubic foot. Okay. So there lies the rub of the project. If you think about it, this is this these two numbers here are the critical numbers because what we're saying is is the borrow pit in its natural condition, the soil from the borrow pit, has a dry unit weight of 96.6. .6. But once this soil has been placed in the embankment, okay, and compacted, it must be compacted to a value of a dry unit weight of 108.3. So we just can't say, well, we need 350,000 here, let's take 350,000 from the borrow pit and be done with it. Because the soil from the borrow pit is going to be have to be compacted to get it from 96.6 .6 to a higher density of 108.3 or a higher unit weight, dry unit weight of 108.3, we're going to have to compact it. So we're going to need more than 350,000. So by the time we compact it and get it from 96.6 to 108.3, we have enough volume to meet the requirement of 350,000. Okay? Now the way we're going to do the calculation is we're going to actually step back and take a look at what these dry unit weights mean, okay? So the dry unit weight, okay, for the embankment is equal to the weight of the solids of the embankment over the volume of the soil, okay, from the embankment. This just goes back to what dry unit weight is. Dry unit weight is the weight of the solids over the volume. Now we have subscripts here for embankment E, okay, but that's basically based on the definition. Likewise, for the borrow pit, the same formulation would lead us to this. So the dry unit weight for the borrow pit is equal to the weight of the solids of the borrow from the borrow pit over the volume of the borrow pit. Again, this is just based on what the definition of unit weight is. The weight of solids over the volume. And we have subscripts for borrow and subscripts for embankment. Now, a key observation with this problem is that the weight of the solids from the embankment is going to be the same as the weight of the solids from the borrow. Okay? When we take soil from the borrow pit and we place it over here in the embankment, okay, the solids themselves aren't going to change. Okay? What's going to change when we compact the soil is we're going to remove a lot of those air voids. Right? We're going to have a mechanical compaction that's going to remove the air void. So we're going to get a dry unit weight that, that progresses from a 96.6 to 108.3. We're going to get there. But the solids themselves are the solids. Like when, whatever solids we move from here are going to be placed here. We're not doing anything to the solids. When we get the higher dry unit weights, we get that because we reduce the volume. And we reduce the volume by changing, by removing the air voids. Okay? So this is a very key observation, is that the solid component's not going to change. The weight of the solids, if you have 100 pounds of soil here of the solids, that's 100 pounds of solids there. Okay? What changes again is the volume because you're compacting it because you're removing the voids. Okay, so based on this observation, if I rearrange these equations, the weight of the solids from the embankment is equal to the dry density, the dry unit weight from the embankment times the volume of the embankment, right? Just rearranging this algebraically. Okay. Likewise, the weight of the solids from the borrow pit is equal to the dry unit weight from the borrow pit times the volume of the borrow pit. Okay. What we're after is we're after the volume for the borrow pit. So I rearrange this one time algebraically. I have the dry unit weight from the embankment times the volume of the embankment over okay, the dry unit weight of the borrow pit. All that is equal to the volume of the borrow pit. Okay. So let's substitute these values in. And for space, I'm not going to be able to put the units like I normally would, but the dry unit weight for the embankment is 114 
Okay, the volume of the embankment is 350. We're dividing that by the dry unit weight for the borrow, which is 96.6. Okay, and this gives us all volume for the borrow fit. Now I'm going to take this value, for, for lack of a better place, I'm just going to put it over here so everyone can see the answer clearly. Okay. So when we run through this calculation, we end up that we, it ends up that we need 392,391 cubic feet. Okay, that is the answer to this problem. So, to recap, we're going to have to extract 392,000 391 feet, cubic feet of soil from the borrow pit so that when we compact it to meet the compaction requirements, we get 350,000 cubic feet here in the embankment. And again, the reason behind that is because the natural state, the, nat the soil in the borrow pit as it is, has a dry unit weight of 96. It has to get to 108.3, so we have no choice but to compact it to get it from 96.6 to 108.3, which means we just need a little more soil. So again, we're going to need 392,000 roughly, so that by the time we compact it, it'll get to 350,000 in the amount. That concludes this.